it back a little bit. I'm trying to remember this oh, song. Oh, well, this, this is yours. Yeah. I should intro this um, video with you playing. Oh, okay, yeah. That's what I should do. Become quicksand if that's not what you want to do. P.S. We're not cousins. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We're not Papa, cousins. children. <laughs> this is not before and this is not after. <laughs> that's right. Because <laughs> I just realized <laughs> the Blasians, the Blasians. How was that like? How was growing up in uh, <laughs> your mom is Japanese? Yeah, my mom is Japanese. And your dad? He's black. He's black. From? He's from, his family's from Mobile, Alabama. How do they meet? <laughs> they met in a funk band. <laughs> <laughs> That's Japanese. so cute. Yeah. yeah, and she was obsessed with American soul music, so she moved from Tokyo, Japan. What? She like took a hike and like just came to the States. That's like my mom. My mom came from Philippines. Yeah. Hold on, does your mom have an accent though? Yeah, she does. She does? Yeah, my mom was full on like She's a flop. Yeah, she is <laughs> she she when you listen to her speak, you're like, oh yeah, she's Really? She's a singer or she's a keyboard player. Oh, she plays the keyboard. She's serious. She's serious. My keyboard mom plays player. guitar. Is she? Oh. Guitar and piano. Oh, so you come from a musical family. No. My my mom is like super she's an artist, but she works as an accountant. My dad, um, photographer, artist. And uh, we met at <laughs> Prince's listening party. That's Hi, Prince. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Judith Hill? Um, I am a artist based in LA, and my parents are both musicians. I grew up in a very musical family. I've always been a singer. I grew. I studied musical composition. I was actually a composer before I was a background singer. Okay. So I've always been in music, but. My, my first gig straight out of college was as a background singer for a French artist, Michelle Polnareff. So, and then since then I've just been working, I had the opportunity to work as a background singer. Did you have like a, a moment that was like, you know what, I need to transition or I, I need to not sing background anymore? Like, what was that for you? As a background singer, I made a definitive decision, no matter how great, because it's a great job to be a background singer. You're traveling the world, you're, you're well taken care of, but there is that t moment where you say to yourself, okay, if I really want to pursue my dreams as an artist, I got to do it now. And you got to plow the way. And um, so yeah, I did leave my jobs. And um, sometimes it is, a, it is a step of faith because you don't know what's on the other side of it. You just know this is what you want to do. This is your dream and you got to go for it. So for those people that think, oh my goodness, you're on The Voice, or right. you're working with Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, you have this amazing, fabulous life. Yeah, it's not as glamorous as people make it out to be. I mean, people, it's so funny, people will stop me in the grocery store and just be like, so how's it going? Like, oh my God, you know? And what they fail to realize is that like, the life of an artist is a heavy grind. I mean, <laughs> most of the time you are in the studio working your butt off. You might not even see the daylight for days. And, and sometimes it can be lonely. You've got to like make time for your friends. And you, it, it's a lot of hard hours you put into it. And, and then you get up on that stage or you're off to the next city touring. Um, so it's a very, very, it's a lot of hard work. Very, I think that people just see the lights and the glamour and the red carpets and they think that, oh my God, they're just living the dream. I mean, I think that like they don't see the They don't see that when it's like cut. It's kind of like isolating sometimes. <laughs> You're, right. you're, you're, not, you're in an island, you're not really, it, it's like, it's a life of like, a life of dedication to your art and sometimes you don't get the luxury of, of going out right. with your friends, you got, you're inside practicing. You know? Right. How was it the first time you stepped foot on stage in front of a 
a huge audience. A huge audience. Did you ever feel like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of freaked me out a lot. Well, I grew up singing in the church. Right. So that was kind of like my stage for, for my earlier years. I think my first real big arena experience was when I was a background singer for Michelle Pumareff. And I just remember like walking down the hallway, getting to the stage and all I heard was <sighs> I was like, what is that sound? I was like, no way, That's we're not going up there, I'm not. And I was like, literally like, freaking out. That was my first big experience, I was horrified. I was like, You were horrified up until that moment when, when you got there. When you got there and you're like, I was still jittery the whole show, but then I got used to like, kind of seeing like a sea of people and being like, okay, this is, actually that's easy, that's actually become easier than like when you're in like an intimate coffee club and you're performing oh, really? for like 20 people and you're seeing their expressions and you feel so vulnerable as an artist, like, really? oh my god, they hate me, but like, when it's a sea of people and you see none of their faces, you don't even feel it, you just kind of like get out there shamelessly and you do your thing, you're just like, this is me, and it kind of becomes like, in a weird way, like a comfort. So what advice do you have for the wonderful shameless booze out there um, that are pursuing the arts, singing, all of that. The the main piece of advice that I would give is to persevere and to go a thousand percent on the off season because I find that in this business there are highs and lows and when you hit those low points, that's those are the most important times where you really go in, you work super hard, um, you work on your music, you work on whatever your passion is in art or entertainment or whatever you're doing and you hustle and, and no matter what is going on around you, maybe it's silent, maybe the phone's not ringing, maybe you feel like you're doing it all in vain, those are the times that really pay off because when it is time for you to get up, you're prepared and you've done your homework and to never let discouragement get the best of you. Right before um, I got the the gig with Michael. I had just like written all this music and I had no way of like putting it out and I was like broke and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get a job at the mall. Mm -hmm. So I like started like applying and like I got a job at Guess and I was like about to like work there and that's when I got the call to work with Michael Jackson. Woo -woo. Yeah. The life of an artist, it's like this roller coaster. You don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but it's just like being faithful, like singing and practicing even when like nothing's going on because like the next thing you know it the next day I was literally like auditioning for Michael Jackson and had to like bring it like really bring it right. but thank God I was still practicing I was honing in on those days where I was like trying to work at the mall I was still like practicing and getting better so that like yeah the next day you're in an audition and you make sure you can kill it you don't want to be the person that's regretting right. like years later like like man I wish I had just really like pursued my real dreams like you don't want to do that you really want to like leave yourself the option like okay I'm giving this up but right. I'm doing this because I know what I really want you know you really want and you know that there's something bigger for you yeah and you gotta take that step you gotta you gotta be the one that's proactive and move towards it and don't just let life happen because if you just let yourself just coast along with your current situation when you know it's not what you want then you're gonna look back years later right it's like the unknown is scary. The unknown is scary, and but you know, I you look at all of like the people that have really done it and right. follow the steps of what they've taken. It's like yeah, they, they really went out on a limb. Some of you may think that it's kind of like oh you're blessed or you're lucky, and it's like yes because like they say luck is preparation meeting opportunity. It's just you have to be prepared and. To be prepared, you have to put in the work. Mm -hmm. Do the work. <laughs> Do the work. Go on a fast. Go on like a, a YouTube or Twitter fast where you're not checking in for a week and see how that feels. You might feel crazy. Like, what was life like 30 years ago? I mean, people didn't have all of the Instagram. Less, and less distractions. Less distractions and more focus. Your, your mind was more focused to get it done. Like, literally sit here. Seven. <laughs> I know a friend that sits here seven hours. Ooh, how do you keep inspired? Music. music. When I, I find myself, every time I sit down here yeah. and I start practicing whatever it is or performing, it inspires me. Or if I'm jamming with my band, like even my parents, I'll go home, my parents are both musicians, and I'll sit there and I'll jam with them. So and it's awesome. so inspiring because like then I get ideas for songs, I start writing songs, I start thinking about songs. Um, whatever it is that excites me when I'm, I'm in that zone, in that creative space, it's just so powerful. It kind of like trumps everything else in life. I always tell my booze, 
um, to like just live, get a get a life and live. Yes, because that's so good. Getting a life, that. you have more to offer. The Absolutely, world. that is a big yes. So, what are your other inspirations outside of music? I'm obsessed with like furniture. Oh, right. And interior design. Like I love exotic pieces that look like they might have came from Thailand or China. Things that are ancient for some reason, I'm, I get, I'm obsessed by it. I go to like thrift stores or like old places and I find these vintage pieces. I'm really into printed stuff and okay. printed and patterns and like asymmetrical like shapes. Like I like triangles for some reason. <laughs> oh, oh so yes. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh god. I love shapes, like odd shapes. I love shapes. I love like patterns that don't match. I know you're living your dreams right now. But what are some other dreams that you hope to achieve? I'm a singer and that's what I love doing, but I also am a composer. And one of my big dreams is to incorporate sight and sound and create like a movie, a motion picture or a musical that um, incorporates some of my compositions for choir and orchestra. Whether it's my voice or some of my incredible singer friends that I know that have these soulful soulful voices or angelic voices or I, I just love all sorts of styles and I my dream project is to incorporate and create this epic piece whether it's a movie or a musical or whatever but that's where I'm headed I think that like there's a reason why I started out in composition and, and bringing all this stuff together I need you to cry box um, check out Judith I'll put all her links and links to like videos and uh, Netflix and all that stuff and yeah. that's it guys until next time remember to do you be you stay true be shameless yeah. <laughs> <laughs>